Hello, Year 6 at John Hunt. I hope you're well. I hope you've had a great week, whether you're at home learning or at school learning. Um, so I hope, I hope you're safe, well and happy. Now, I hope you enjoyed that last week's music session. We filled it with quite a lot, a lot of familiar, um, but kind of I left you with um, introducing a new term. And that was the idea of syncopation. Now, I kind of described it a little, but we didn't really explore too much about what syncopation meant. But today's session, we're very much going to get to grips with what it is, how it feels, what it does to a piece of music, to the mood, the style of the music, and how we can kind of recognise it. So syncopation, I introduced you to this card. Syncopation is when we, well, there's two ways, if you remember, we could describe it. We could describe it in this manner, in when we change a beat that's usually weak to a beat that's strong. Now, let's just sort of understand what that means a little bit. You'll be quite familiar with using that box step that we use for um, connecting to the pulse. So that idea of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, when I get you to do that, often I get you to put that emphasis on one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Four, but actually we can also say that third beat to balance that bar is also a strong beat two three four so that idea of one two three four one two three four so if one and three are usually that strong beat of course it means that two and four are those slightly weaker beats so when we think about this idea of syncopation We've just at the moment thought about that regular way, that regular way of being able to count and connect to the beat. Those strong beats would be that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's shift it then. If what we're saying is when we make a rhythm syncopated, we shift that uh, weight from the weak to the stronger beat. A syncopated rhythm would be that one, two, three, four. So let's see again, using that box step, and certainly you'll feel it very different, particularly if you're still leading with that leg, that same leg you did a moment ago. Let's see how that feels. So I'm going to count you four in, but this time you know you're going to place more emphasis on two and four. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and stop. Now, you'll possibly already begin to feel how, like I say, how it shifts that emphasis from that beat where we're placing the, the accent. But I'm going to just kind of get you to switch and alternate between those. So we'll get that box step going. That idea of that one, two, three, four. And you're going to keep it going. I'm not going to be able to keep it going as I'm holding the card for you. But you're going to keep that going, that beat. I'll still keep counting it. And I'll be counting with that emphasis on a particular beat to help you recognise whether it's kind of a more regular way of performing that pulse or a syncopated. So I'm going to shift between. And you're going to kind of make sure that you shift that emphasis, whether we're on beats one and three or beats two and four. So let's get our feet moving first of all. And then we know we're going to be thinking about shifting that emphasis of where we want that accent to be. So after four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Keep it going. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. So we're going to we'll start with regular. One, two, three, four. 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 One. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, 
three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, stop. So, like I say, I hope, kind of beginning to feel that, that shift of emphasis, certainly using the box step, helps you to recognise that syncopation can be just this, when we change the emphasis on the beat. But I also explain that syncopation can be described when we put emphasis on the offbeat. And if I think back to our clocks, of course, those offbeats, we can see in our wristwatch, they're the ands. There are half beats, that one and two and three and four and. So as we saw those quaver patterns, if I only wanted to clap on the offbeat, my pattern would look like this. It would look, so we had that, just our quaver beats. We didn't look at, uh, oh, we did look at our quaver rests as well, didn't we, in our work last week? So we've got our quaver rests and our quaver beats. So if I wanted to hear that syncopated sound, it'd be that one, and, 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 and. Now, let us see. So when you've seen a, a performer, a musician perform, I'm going to just take that light out. It's shining right in my eyes. Um, what, if you've ever watched a performer, a musician play, often they'll have their foot tapping on the beat as they play different chords, whether it's strumming on the beat, off the beat. So let's try and engage with that idea of tapping on the beat. That one, two, three, four. And what we're going to try and do is get that clap or that click on the offbeat, keep that beat going. Three, four, seven. And, 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 Four, three, two, one, stop. Now, you may or may not be aware that actually you will have experienced lots of different pieces of music with syncopation in. In fact, lots of the different pieces of music you learned as an infant in some of the songs would have had syncopation in. So syncopation, um, let's give you an, one example of a really well-known song. If I was to sing, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Now let's make it even more obvious because whether you're clapping or you're stamping, it's that bit that's the syncopation. So if it was, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, syncopation. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, syncopation. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, syncopation. So obviously we've kind of been getting familiar with syncopation as being that constant offbeat or kind of the constant shift from weak to a stronger beat. Um, but actually sometimes syncopation is just those a, a, a drop of just a few notes that kind of add to that energy. And that's what syncopation does. It definitely makes you feel more energised. It makes the music more lively. And in fact, if you going back to that idea of if you go and listen to a concert of, uh, or a performer, if you clap along with them, I bet you find you're on the offbeat. So it's like one, two, three, four. And of course, as soon as you are on the offbeat, you kind of find yourself moving about to the music. Like I say, it kind of syncopation has a natural energy about it. It just livens up a piece of music or performance. Now, with all this in mind, <laughs> I thought of no, there was no better song to learn I've never, I've not looked at this song. It's kind of been a song that's haunted me um, as a teacher in primary and secondary schools. It's one that a lot of uh, students kind of learn and have some fun with. It was introduced in a film, uh, Pitch Perfect, but you possibly haven't seen the film, but I bet you'll be familiar with the Cup song by Anna Kendrick. Uh, and I thought, because of course it's another great song with a syncopated rhythm accompaniment, there was no better time than in lockdown to uh, get familiar to learn this song finally. So I was quite busy over the weekend beginning to get familiar with this song. 
if you don't know the song, I'm going to do my own little rendition. So, of course, uh, to play that piece of music for you. Um, and then we're going to have a look at trying to learn the actual cup part together today. Okay. And then hopefully put it all together with the song and the, the ukulele accompaniment. I got my ticket for the long way round Two bottle waiting for the way And I sure love your sweet company And I'll meet there tomorrow, what you say? There we go. There's the first verse and chorus from the cup song. But of course, the most iconic part of it is the cup itself. In fact, what I should have said was go and quickly find yourself a cup. Um, so whether you're at home or at school, um, a paint pot will do, or um, not particularly a yogurt pot unless you've got a nice sturdy big yogurt pot. They're quite it's quite fiddly this accompaniment. So you want something big enough and obviously not breakable, not glass. So a, a plastic pot of some description. So as you're finding it, I'm gonna I'll do another rendition of the cup song, uh, but this time with the cup itself. So this is the pattern. I got my ticket for the long way round. Two bottle whiskey for the way. And I still would like some sweet company And I'm leaving tomorrow, what you say? When I'm gone, when I'm gone You're gonna miss me when I'm gone You're gonna miss me by my hair Gonna miss me everywhere You're gonna miss me when I'm gone so there we go. There's the cup song. That's what I've been busy learning for you this week. Um, but let's break this down. So one thing that you've probably noticed straight away with how the cup's being used, whether it's stamping it, tapping it, rasping it, holding it, the cup makes lots of different types of sounds. Now, we've been really good at kind of exploring that idea of different types of sounds, quality of sounds, where we've thought about body percussion in class when we've kind of done our stamp or our slap for deep resonating sounds or those harsher, brighter sounds. And actually, it's the timbres, it's the types of sounds that the cup's producing in the accompaniment that makes, that gives it that syncopated feel. So sometimes that shift of that, that emphasis, that accent, is kind of not where you expect it to be. So this pattern, this short pattern, becomes syncopated because of the timbres of the cup, because of kind of where they're positioning in the bar. So should we have a go at learning it? And I, I can assure you, you'll soon realise what sort of learning you are. I'm going to show you it in a few ways because you're now so well adept with reading notation too. I'm even going to show you kind of how this particular rhythm would look. Um, but let's have a go first of all at learning kind of the actions. And certainly for me, I kind of connected to words to do with the movement of this um, particular pattern. So there's two bars. So we are in four time, we are in that one, two, three, four. We are in groups of four, but there's two groups of four that keep this pattern on repeat. So we start with clap, 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 tap, clap. So if you use copy, clap, clap, tap, tap, tap. So after we've done that, clap, clap, tap, tap, tap. We do clap, kick, move. Now, these are the words that I've kind of associated with it to try and kind of connect better. So it's clap, clap, tap, 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 clap, kick, move. Let's just do that a few times. Clap, clap, tap, 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 clap, kick, move. Again. Three, four. Clap, clap, tap, 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 clap, kick, move. Two more times. 
my turn. Clap, clap, tap, 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 clap, pick, three. So in fact, I said I'd show you the rhythm. Let me show you that first part already. Now we've got some quicker beats and here you won't be surprised because that, that tap, 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 we would count it like this. So the bit we've learned so far is that clap, clap, tap, 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 clap, pick, move, so that. One, and you can see there's some extra bits of notation now in terms of how we count. These here, these are my even faster beats. Now we normally see them in fours. So if you think back to our pomegranate, so that quicker rhythm, pomegranate, there were four beats, weren't there? Four quarter beats that make that full beat. But of course we've got a rest there. So last week in our notation work, we didn't look at semi-quavers and semi-quaver rests but they're certainly existing in this pattern so when we count it as a musician it's that one and two e and three and four so it's one and two e and three and four so that's the pattern we've had so far let's just do that again now at any point you can stop you can go back you can look at it like I say I spent quite a few <laughs> Uh, hours learning this um, so feel free to keep going back and revisiting it so we've got that clap clap tap 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 clap pick move and last time one two three four clap clap so I'm going to move on to part two of this pattern this rhythm pattern if you want you can pause or you can come back and look at it as a whole later so the next part, again, it starts with a clap, but we go to our side, up and down. So it's clap, side, up, down. Let's have it again. Clap, side, up, down. So you can hear certain softer sounds, can't you, as we're picking up, as we're manipulating that cup. So clap, side. And then after we've done the clap, side, up, down, I say to myself, bass. So thinking of the base of the cup, hand, table. So it's that. Let's go from the clap, side, up, down, base, hand, table. Clap, side, up, down, base, hand, table. Again. Side, up, down, base, and tail. Clap, side, up, down, base, and tail. It's quite easy for these cups to slip about, particularly if you've got cold hands. Um, so let's see. Again, you could keep looking at this part as many times as you, as you like. Pause, rewind, go back, try and embed that pattern. In fact, before we look at joining it together, let's look at that second side. This part is easier rhythm. It's all our quavers and finally finishing with our crutchet. It's that one and two and three and four. It's very much almost like our wristwatch, except we haven't got that extra quaver there. So it's that one and two and three and four. So that's that pattern. We've got that clap side up, down, bass and table. So this rhythm, combined with that first part, is what we call a, an ostinato pattern. In music, when we have that idea of an ostinato, it's something that's kept on loop, something that's played again and again. And this goes throughout the whole song. It starts before the performer starts singing the song, starts with the there we go. It starts with the actual cup sounds before the uh, banjo and the singer comes in. So we've got that. Let's just look at that section, that second section again, one more time. So clap, side, up, down, bass, hand, 
table. So the two combined, and again, I'll kind of show you the rhythm so you can see the notation. Um, the two combined sound like this. So we do that clap, 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 pick, move, clap, side, up, down, bass, hand, table. So this is my complete ostinato pattern. Clap, clap, tap, 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 clap, pick, move, clap, side, up, down, bass, and table. And you can keep practicing that, or if you choose, you can kind of see these two rhythms side by side in their notation as well. So that's the rhythm, that's the pattern that we've kind of got throughout the song. Now, my biggest tip to you is what we're kind of looking at. It's quite a complex rhythm pattern, particularly with the movement, trying to make sure that we've got all those different timbres of the cup. Um, is to practice it slowly, first of all. So we've got that. We practice, should we go through it nice and slow, a tempo that's nice and steady for us, first of all. So if we go one, two, three, four. Clap, clap, tap, 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 clap, pick, two, clap, side. Up just a little, and start to begin to get it a little quicker. So, one, two, three, four. Say you can always go back. Let's have a slightly quicker. One, two, three, four. I think we'll stick at that speed. So slightly slower than when I first sang the song, and actually even that's slower than Anna Kendrick's. If you kind of listen, if you listen to the track, uh, if you're interested in kind of being able to perform it to the speed, it's much more. Uh, let me get this table ready. That's the beat. but you've obviously got to be well coordinated and be really confident with that rhythm. So as I say, kind of all those techniques that we've done, breaking down the rhythm, kind of finding ways of remembering that rhythm so it's more meaningful to us while we're beginning to coordinate and navigate our way around that pattern. They're all really helpful, but of course, practicing it at a nice, steady, slow tempo and then picking it up. So should we have a go at trying to do that pattern? And, and bring it together with the music itself. So what I'll try to do is, um, in fact, I'll do it without the ukulele first of all. If you know the song, or if you've got the lyrics, you can sing along with me. Um, but it's that pattern all the way through. Okay, so we'll go. That speed, okay. One. Three, four. I got my ticket for the long way round. Two bottle whiskey for the way. And I sure would like some sweet company. And I'm leaving tomorrow, what you say? And I'm gone. 
when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my hair. Gonna miss me everywhere. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. did you do one thing i didn't really say we found tr tried to find so many different ways into learning this cup part is actually my best advice for when a musician's playing uh, a syncopated rhythm is to really just feel it kind of not to be come obsessed with the counting of it's the feel of the music like i say we know syncopation adds that energy and kind of that um excitement piece of music naturally so it's kind of more the feel of it you kind of just want to let yourself feel the groove of that particular rhythm part more than anything let's have it one more time and then let's see if we're, i can pick it up with you without doing the cups and i'll go back on the ukulele so we've kind of got the fuller version of that song so one two three four I got my ticket for the long way round Two bottle whiskey for the way And I sure would like some sweet company And I'm leaving tomorrow, what you say? When I'm gone, when I'm gone You're gonna miss me when I'm gone you're gonna miss me by my hair, gonna miss me everywhere. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. Okay. So like I say, you can go back, you can repeat. I'll start you off. time it's quite hard when you start to layer the rhythm and some chord accompaniment and some singing but you kind of begin to get an idea as to how it all fits together and how that really lovely syncopated ostinato part with a cup can kind of make that piece come to life if you haven't seen anna kendrick's version of the cups take a listen um i hope you've enjoyed i hope it was worth learning for you and that we've had some fun created some music with a cup whilst exploring that idea of syncopation, recapping things like timbre and rhythm and beat and notation. I look forward to putting together some more music for you next week. Until then, take care, stay safe, keep enjoying your music. Bye.